اوكي بسم الله في هذا الفيديو رح اقرا اخر اخر سلايدات تاعون ويك 7 تاعون الجامينج ف اللي درسنا انه الجامينج مش زي ال يعني مثلا لما الادفرسري يحاول يسرق الباسورد او شيء احنا بنسوي انكريبشن اذا حاول مثلا يتنصت يقرا ايش احنا بنحكي احنا بنحط انكريبشن ف قصدي بنستخدم الانتجريتي الماك بس لما يكون عندنا جامينج بيكون في عندنا انترفيرنس وهذا الانترفيرنس اتس نوت لايك سمثينج يو كان اد كريبتوغرافيك ميجرز تو ف اتس ديفرنت فهون تعريف الجامينج انه هو a severe DOS attack اللي هو denial of service um, uh, by blocking the wireless medium يعني هو هو denial of service already اصلا بيستهلك كل resources تبعت ال ال مثلا ال يعني ال receiver فبالتالي يعني it 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 blocks access ف what what the jamming does انه بيكون عندنا ال wireless medium ف أنا if I want to send a packet first I have to check if the if the medium is uh, is available if the medium فيات فاضي يعني uh, the packet gets sent not necessarily delivered but sent أما لما ال wireless medium يكون full uh, the packet doesn't send uh, uh, doesn't get sent فهنا بيكون عنا مشكلة إنه uh, ال resource تبعنا اللي هو ال wireless medium بيكون unavailable فا إيش ال jammer بقدر يعمل؟ prevents users from being able to commence with legitimate Mac operations um, so uh, I guess this means that uh, it avoids um, users from being able to start Uh, with the Mac operations, so it 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 hinders the the Mac uh, the Mac uh, يعني the Mac operations. It introduces packet collisions that force repeated backups. So خلنا نشوف what repeated backups backups mean. Uh, but it makes sense in that it creates collision. لأنه when there's two signals uh, entering one medium. فراح يصير في مشكلة back of attack as a repeated game a more general class of what the number of back back offs is sent to okay so I think in number of repeated back offs retries If a node fails to gain access to the shared transmission medium, so is a is a packet uh, uh, إجيت بدي أبعد packet وطلع إنه not available the medium um, راح يرجع راح يرجع يبعت the packet يعني it's gonna re retry to send. I think that's what they refer to. Um, Or even jam transmissions. Obviously, a jammer will jam transmissions. وأول شيء بدنا نعمله إنه إحنا نفهم إيش هم ال ال jamming techniques وال attacks وكيف ممكن إن نكتشفهم. طيب ال characteristics and metrics. Packet sent ratio. is the ratio of packets successfully sent by a legitimate sender هاي نفس ما حكينا هو لما لما نبعت باكت والباكت هذا بيشوف انه الميديوم فاضي بقدر ابعت فبيعمل سنت فهون بيكون عندنا باكت سنت هلا الريشو الريشو with the total باكت سنت يعني كم مرة انا حاولت اعمل سنت وكم مرة عمل عن جد سنت ف it's the number of sent over the total number of packets whether sent or not sent uh, الماك بروتوكولز في عنا الكاريرز uh, um, ايش هاي 
MAC protocols, carrier sensing and signal strength, comparison, causing buffered and dropped packets. So I think هذه ليش بيستخدموا هاي الباكت سنتريشو فبيستخدموها عشان الماك بروتوكولز والكارير سنتينج and signal strength comparison causing buffered and dropped packets okay packet delivery ratio is the ratio of packets successfully delivered compared to sent packets may be corrupt even if received Okay, so our issue عنا the packet sent if if the medium is available. بعدين هلا packet sent does not necessarily mean that it is delivered to the uh, receiver. Uh, it it's not necessary. Uh, كيف نعرف if it's delivered? هلا it's sent خلاص عرفنا if the medium is available. So كيف نعرف if it's delivered? If it's delivered. We're gonna uh, is, uh, get receive back an acknowledgement, which is ACK. So, added the ACK that we receive um, uh, over, يعني the packet delivery ratio هو عدد the acknowledgements that we received over the total uh, uh, total the uh, uh, sent total sent. Packets, okay. يعني if if uh, if I get the uh, if the medium is empty and the packet is sent, how many acknowledgements do I receive back? يعني this is like a comparison. So it's a ratio also. Oh, هذه ما فهمتش. Packets may be corrupt even if received. يعني المفروض يكون صحيح. يعني ممكن أنا أبعت packet ويوصل. بس إحنا ما بنهتم نهتم إنه يوصل ويكون صح لأنه هون مكتوب measured by receiver with pass CRC ف pass CRC أظن هاي اسمها ال 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 مش عارفة إيش يسموها تبعت ال error ثواني بس Uh, I think it's uh, uh, okay. It's one of the error checking me 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 methods, cyclic redundancy check error. So high data error. So it's either measured by the receiver using the uh, error check or measured by the sender using the pa uh, packet sent and acknowledgements. يا رب أكون فهمت. طيب هلا عنا الماك بروتوكول يعني هلا الجامر بيأثر أول شيء درسنا إنه الجامر بيأثر على الماك بروتوكول. فإحنا هلا بنشوف كيف هذا الشيء بيصير. أنا هلا بدي أبعث المسج إم، فأنا بسأل أول شيء is the mess is the channel idle if it is then I will start to send يعني هو أنا بيصير عنا send if it's not that means في عنا back off it it doesn't send and then it repeats يعني number of backups backups is how many times it repeats فلما يكون عنا جامر أكيد الباك أوفس رح يكون عالي لأنه هو الجامر رح رح يعبي الشانل وحيبطل أيدل فلما يكون عندنا جامر إيش بيصير؟ We need to send M Is the channel idle? If yes then أنا مش فاهم صراحة أنا uh, I don't get this uh, I don't get this Um, so الجامر I don't get this بس مفروض إن الجامر الجامر بمنع يعني بزيد ال back offs okay so 
خلنا نشوف Okay, so and I'm gonna leave it for now. هلا عنا types of jammers. أول إشي عنا the constant jammer. So this is what a constant jammer looks like in in decibel. It it continually emits a radio signal, which is just noise. يعني it's like a noise. And the device will not wait for the channel to be idle. يعني it will always be working. Okay, this is this is the trait of the constant jammer. But then عنا deceptive jammer. So the constant jammer is okay. So why do they look the same? Deceptive jammer injects regular packets with no gap between packets. So it also it it also looks like a constant signal. So so a normal device will remain in the receive state and cannot switch to the send state because of the constant stream of incoming packets. Okay, so it's it's not a noise. It sends uh, packets, normal packets, that um, I guess fill up the medium. Uh, so the medium will think there are packets being sent and this will make a jam in the medium and thus we will not have uh, an available medium okay so hi it's also constant but the reason why it's deceptive is because it has regular packets so it looks like normal traffic now a random jammer uh, it alternates between sleeping and jamming. Okay, and it can act as a constant or deceptive jammer when jamming. Uh, so it can act as noise or it can act as a, a, a packet, normal packet. It's just a random one. It takes energy conservation into consideration. Yani, uh, why, why is the... Um, why is the random jammer uh, takes energy into con into con it takes energy into consideration because uh, it sleeps that's the reason because it sleeps it's not always high and it looks the same but uh, if we look at the uh, what is this let's check so this is the sample sequence. Ah, oh, okay, it's just the sequence number. So, Hona, it's uh, very constant, but here it it uh, it yani sleeps and then goes up and then sleeps. So it's pretty zigzaggy. So a random jammer will also look random. Uh, okay, so. What's meant by CBR, I wonder? Okay, so then we have a random jammer. Then a reactive jammer. Had a reactive jammer. It's the most dangerous kind of, yani, you can think of it that way. Because um, it's... Um, other three are active, this is not. So it's considered not active. It's considered reactive. Um, and the reason for this is that it stays quiet until there is activity on the channel. Okay, so this is why it's really annoying. Yani, uh, it it will it will keep um, yani it it will keep the medium available. So a packet will be uh, sent, but as soon as the packet is sent, على طول it it works. ف... It's it's kind of like annoying. Um, the target this targets the reception of a message. Uh, okay, this is uh, this style does not conserve energy because it needs to sense the medium. However, it may be harder to detect. 
AI, يعني, يعني it may consume more من energy because it has to keep checking the medium as soon as the packet is sent. Uh, يعني if a packet is in the medium, على طول it works. But the idea is in uh, in in it. يعني it's really hard to detect. How how can you know there's a jammer? يعني يعني the noisy jammer it just emits noise so it's easy to just shift like you know the noise is just like an offset it it uh, increases the the signal and uh, the other are constant so okay in this section we have an experiment to try to detect um uh, a jammer so here we have distances which are equal and here we have a sender here we have a receiver and here we have a jammer and we want to see what the يعني how to uh, um, how to detect jammers using statistics so um For the constant jammer, uh, okay, I forgot what B Mac means. Ah, the B Mac, I think it's the one اللي بيغير, بيغير, يعني it tests the noise and then it removes the noise and then it takes the signal. يعني يعني مثلاً إذا أنا receiver and I'm always receiving. A noisy a noise at at uh, at three at مثلاً, level three so I will know this is noise because it's constant at three يعني, signals are not constant it can't happen so what I will do is I will just shift the three to make it my zero and then that's it I will just remove like this will be my threshold and then the this the normal signal will will actually appear normal uh, the fixed mac is uh, it doesn't do anything لا wait هذه the threshold changes as the the noise changes هذه uh, it fixes a threshold it fi it has a threshold it fixes that threshold and it keeps it at that uh, at that uh, يعني it keeps the threshold uh, constant. And by this one, the threshold is changing according to the, the the changing of the noise. And this is what I understand. I remember. Inshallah, Let's analyze the constant and the reactive jammer. So for the constant jammer, the packet sent ratio is uh, 74. For thirty-eight for this distance, so, uh, similarly seventy-seven for a, a longer distance, and seventy-two for a very large distance, uh, and this would make sense because um, because yani uh, the. Okay, I don't know. خلنا نشوف ال packet delivery ratio. So uh, in the first case, the packet doesn't get delivered, and in the second case, the packet also doesn't get delivered. Very rarely gets delivered, and for the third case, it al almost always gets delivered. يعني it's always sent and always delivered. It could be the annual constant jammer. Um, at very high distance, uh, XA. so distance from the jammer. So if the jammer is far away, the noise doesn't affect. Ah, okay, so for the B, it's affected by the noise because it's a constant jammer. It's highly affected by the noise. And we can see this when we have a very uh, large distance, there's not much noise reaching. 
خلنا نجرب ال fixed mac for the fixed mac the packet sent ratio is very low it never gets sent and actually it ah okay now it makes now the data makes more sense so so when we have a, a, a threshold for the noise it, it it sometimes the the packets get sent even though there's a constant jammer however if there's no um, if there's not this feature the fix mac doesn't have the feature of removing the threshold tab noise so this is why it's very very low yani uh, almost never because the threshold is fixed so the noise is always uh, always um, uh, changing the signal yani if the if this if we have a if we have like a 1 and a 0 uh, and this is like our uh, like this is our uh, uh, point of يعني, this is like our uh, نسميها, هاي, هاي احنا بنعتبر, بنعتبرها, هون بنعتبر واحد, هون بنعتبر صفر, فلما يكون عندنا noise, هادي حتطلع, هادي signal, حتطلع لفوق, فحيصير عندنا هيك 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 لأنه في noise وال noise it's added added to the signal فاحنا احنا من هون from this perspective من هذا الخط من هذا threshold ما رح نشوف اشي رح نشوف كل رح نشوف بس one one هيك لأن احنا لأنه احنا ما رح الصفر حتى الصفر تاعتنا تحولت ل one اوكي اما for for the high for the fixed Mac أما for the changing Mac يعني sometimes it cancels out the, the noise for the reactive jammer uh, reactive uh, so الفكرة بالreactive jammer إنه أول ما يسمع في packet sent بيروح هو بيشتغل فالpackets they always almost always get sent okay فإحنا ال reactive jammer ما بمنع ال packet sent ratio لكن ال packet delivery ratio شوفوا كيف صار صفر فهو هاي مشكلته إنه أول ما ما أجي أنا أبعث packet بروح هو فجأة بيجي بيعمل الجام فا it never gets delivered there's always error in the signal هلا حتحكوا لي إنه طيب هون the packet is delivered for the 54 distance at 54 the reason is because um, it takes time for the reactive jammer to react and if the reactive jammer is far away uh, it's gonna take a lot of time أول إشي reactive jammer أول إشي لازم يضل يتسمع على الميديوم ولو لو اكتشف إنه في packet sent هو بعدين بيشتغل بس عشان يشتغل بدها وقت لتوصل المسج يعني ال السيجنال تبعت الجامر بدها وقت لتوصل للميديوم او للريسيفر ف ف ف ف ف اتس غونا فيل اتس غونا فيل اند ات فيلز ايفن مور ات ات ايفن لارجر ديستنسز فالجامر بشكل عام ما بيشتغل منيح لما يكون بعيد ف وهون نفس السيناريو لكن هون الفرق انه هون عندنا 33 بايتس هون حتقولوا لي انه هون اوكي فهمنا ليش ات ات ما بيشتغل لانه كثير بطيء لكن لكن هادي على 7 بايتس ال 7 بايتس كثير سريعه يعني الباكيت لما نبعته كثير بيكون سريع فال رياكتيف جامر ما راح يقدر يلحق مع الباكيت لكن لما الباكيت عندنا يكون كثير كبير حيكون اكيد بطيء ف رح يقدر يلحق على الرياكتيف جامر رح يعمل رياكشن رح رح يقدر ياخد بعض الباكيتس لانه الباكيتس طويله فرح تكون بطيئه وممكن انه الرياكتيف جامر يخرب عليها طبعا هاي لل 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 الثريش هولد اللي بيتغير اللي 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 عنده اللي اللي اتس ادابتف تو نويز 
أما ال fixed اللي مش adaptive to noise literally إنه ما في أي فرق بس actually it operates better slightly very slightly better يعني هنا it's more prominent إنه 58 صار 87 so I guess because When we have a fixed threshold, لأنه ال 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 changing threshold I think is ب بيخرب من من ال reactive jammer. لكن هون يعني هنا we don't have noise this is why يعني هنا it's removing noise but there's no noise احنا we're only dealing with a reactive jammer اوكي وهنا في هذا المثال ال reactive jammer it's a 20 byte عشان هيك احنا قلنا انه انه 20 byte حيكون بطيء مقارنة بال 7 bytes عشان هيك هنا it fails لانه ال packet is very small so هاي حيكون ابطا لكن لو قارناها مع packet 33 bytes حنكون إحنا أسرع إحنا الجامر يعني. Okay, so this is what I think. What attributes will help us detect jamming? فإحنا شوفنا the signal strength, will carrier sensing time. آه يعني there's a certain time if if the packet is not received then يمكن يكون عنا جامر. The packet delivery ratio. So, أول إشي هدول لإيش؟ هاي jamming characteristics and metrics. أما هذيك هاي for detect I think type of jammer. So, خلنا نشوف how this does. يعني لما how can we use signal strength to detect jamming فعلى قبل ما نقرأ السلايد احنا نعرف انه السيجنال strength لو كانت عالية فأكيد هذا الاشي كويس لانه لو السيجنال strength قوية الفرصة انه السيجنال توصل لل توصل للريسيفر عالية لانه قوية السيجنال يعني منطق ف... فلو كان عندنا signal strength عالية والسيجنال ما وصلت إيش هذا بيعني؟ هذا علامة سيئة إنه إنه أكيد في جامر قاعد عم يمنع السيجنال توصل. أوكي. So each device should gather its own statistics to make its own decisions on the possibility of jamming. Establish a baseline or build a statistical model of normal energy levels prior to jamming of noise levels. But how? I think هذه اللي اللي زي ما أنا حكيت يعني أنا بتذكر الدكتور شرحها. So I think هاي هي اللي مقصود فيها يعني لو الانرجي ليفل عالي ومع ذلك ال packet ما عم يوصل. أول إشي عنا ال basic average and energy detection. We can extract two statistics from this reading: the average signal strength and the total signal energy over a period of time. So, basic average and energy detection. So, نأخذ ال average تبع ال signal. فنقدر نعرف ال average signal strength and the total signal energy over a period of time. Okay, signal strength spectral discrimination is a method that employs higher order processes to calculate the differences between samples. So if him to Muhadi, it's basic statistics. It's just taking the average and uh, detecting the energy levels. And the the signal strength spectral discrimination, 
um, looks in higher order crossings uh, يعني it compares between a sample and a sample it sees what's the relation between a sample and a sample high it doesn't take into account the relation between each sample it just takes samples as is this method is practical to implement on resource constrained wireless devices such as sensor nodes as it involves computing difference in samples okay خلنا نشوف كيف هاي الأشياء بتساعدنا هذه هي الـ Signal Strength الـ RSSI The average values of for the constant jammer and the max traffic source are roughly equal So هذه الـ Max, max Traffic وهذه الـ constant jammer so الـ average تقريبا نفس الشي يعني لو أخذنا الـ average حيطلع لنا هيك لو أخذنا الـ average تبع هاي حيطلع لنا هيك okay um, the signal strength oh sorry the constant jammer and the deceptive jammer have roughly the same average values ونفس الشيء للـ constant uh, jammer و الـ deceptive jammer عندهم نفس الـ average uh, The signal strength average from a CBR source does not differ much from the reactive jammer scenario So the reactive jammer it looks like the CBR so the signal strength average from a CBR source does not e differ much from the reactive jammer scenario ah oh, mantiq لان the reactive jammer it, it copies it, it reacts with the source يعني. so these results suggest that we may not be able to use simple statistics such as the average signal strength to identify jamming. بالمختصر ان الافرج ما بيعطينا كتير information. So the signal strength is not really successful. We cannot distinguish the reactive or random jammer from normal traffic. تمام. The average ما ما بيختلف. A reactive or random jammer will alternate between busy and idle in the same way as normal traffic behaves. Hey, it makes sense. The random jammer, زي ما قلنا, إنه it's just packets. It keeps sending packets, so it's, it's, it looks normal. And the reactive jammer, it copies the actual traffic. كل ما, كل ما شافت traffic, عملت, عملت هي signal. ف it's, it, they both, it, the reactive and the actual, will look identical. ولكن ال hook, اللي هي ال higher order crossings, uh, will work for some jammer scenarios but are not powerful enough to detect all jammer scenarios. So, خلنا نشوف ال hook. ال hook بياخد ايش هاي differentiation ولا ايش هاي derivative. I don't know بس uh, الفكرة انه it clusters it clusters deceptive jammer and the uh, constant jammer in a place different from the traffic and the CBR so it can easily be detected using this hook hook curve and this one is the same this here they're using 
a reactive and a random jama. هون a deceptive and constant. هون a reactive and random jama. For reactive and random, بتحسوا إنه مش كتير عمل فرق. إيش هذا أنا كتبت هون؟ يعني فاهمين عليه إنه إنه it works for this but it doesn't work for this. It's not perfect. So it works. The the hook works for the for the deceptive and constant jump. And this makes sense لإنه the relation between the constant jammer, between the signal and the signal of the constant jammer, راح تكون كتير غير عن ال ال higher order difference اللي موجود في ال شو اسمه بال بال normal traffic. With deceptive jammer, it it sends packets, but non-stop. يعني it doesn't stop. مو زي normal traffic. فممكن يكون عنا طريقة ممكن نفرق فيها the jammers. لكن the reactive jammer تقريبا بالضبط زي the the actual traffic. It's not like the deceptive jammer that keeps sending packets. Reactive jammer only sends the same way the actual sender sends. With random jammer, برضو يعني it's random. It looks like the real, real traffic. لإنه real traffic is random أصلاً. So this is why the higher order crossings do not cluster them away. يعني هاي they are clustered away. So هلا رح رح نشوف the carrier sensing time. In carrier sensing time, عنا the 802.11 uses CSMA, okay, and RTS CTS. Okay, خلنا نشوف what CSMA means. And I know it's a medium access control, but okay, so it's one of the types of the CDMA. Oh, hi, Anna. So if the channel is occupied either a time out or stuck in channel sensing, فاللي فهمتوا إنه بيكون عنا وقت بيعمل sense لل time, ولما هذا time يطول عن عن وقت معين. معناها إنه في مشكلة. طيب هلا establish an average sensing time during normal traffic to allow you to compare when you may be jammed. Only works with fixed signal strength. Not adaptive thresholds. Such as BMAC. Okay, so إحنا درسنا من أول ال BMAC هو ال adaptive thresholds اللي هو بتغير حسب ال ال noise. Okay, فهاد اللي درسنا فوق. ااا فبيقولنا إنه إنه ال carrier sensing time ما بيشتغل لما يكون عنا كتير variability. بس لما يكون عنا constant signal strength, which makes sense. Determine when large sensing times are results of jamming by setting a threshold. Determine when determine when large sensing times. Ah, okay. So okay. So it makes sense. إنه مثلاً فلنفترض إنه عندنا high signal ratio, high signal strength, but the time is very high. يعني it doesn't make sense. يعني high signal strength supposed to is supposed to take lower time to send. Threshold set conservatively to reduce false positive. Okay, هاي makes sense. يعني من عدل threshold بطريقة إنه 
يكون يعني يعني اذا يعني اذا في تو ديتكت جامر بشكل اهم اوكي Carrier sensing time analysis. أول شيء عنا it detects the constant and deceptive jammer. ليش it detects the constant and deceptive jammer? But it does not detect the random and reactive jammer. Okay. تمام. So I think the reason is because the the constant جامر بغير الوقت سمسنج تايم سو خلنا نشوف هادي كونستنت جامر وهادي ديسبتيف جامر وهاي الماكس ترافيك فلما يكون عندنا الماكس ترافيك هيك الوقت الوقت بيكون كتير قصير اوكي بس ما يكون عندنا جامر الوقت بيكون كتير طويل الوقت طويل كتير يعني في فرق كتير كبير 500 ملي سكندز بس هون عنا ال reactive jammer وال random jammer طبعا احنا زي ما قلنا ال reactive it, it's, it mimics the real traffic فصعب انه نسوي له detection و ال random jammer كتير بيشبه ال reactive jammer لانه هو, هو ما بيشبه ال reactive jammer بس يعني it's random and, and usually uh, normal traffic is random ف it, it looks like the normal traffic ف هون عندنا no traffic it takes no traffic and the reactive so random jammer the time it takes طبعا ال cumulative distribution is is when we have addition of probabilities يعني the probability of being sent at second zero plus the probability of being sent at second one is added together okay this is why it keeps increasing okay so يعني يعني when once you reach مثلا 20 milliseconds uh, the the probability that um, it, the packet has already been sent before uh, is is is, uh, is almost 100% ف this is what uh, this uh, cumulative this uh, cumulative probability is packet delivery ratio هلا إحنا خلصنا ال time ال signal خلينا نشوف ال signal strength وال carrier sensing time وال packet delivery ratio هلا بنشوف ال packet delivery ratio اللي هو اللي راح يكون okay How much PD, uh, packet delivery ratio degradation can be caused by non-jamming normal network dynamics such as congestion? 78. Why we can see in the experiment, you know, it's like this is the normal. It can be measured in two ways, by the sender or receiver. The packet delivery ratio can be used to differentiate a jamming attack from a congested network okay so if we have a congested network the packet sent uh, will be low and hence the packet delivery ratio will be higher thus if the if the uh, uh, if if we have a jammer um, the packet sent will be high But the packet delivery ratio will be low. Yani they're kind of like opposites. A simple threshold based on PDR is a powerful statistic to determine jamming versus congestion. So it makes sense. Like, no, yani if I have a jammer, uh, packets are not going to be uh, delivered, but they're gonna be sent. Especially for the reactive jammer, so there's a big difference uh, between a congested network where the packet will not be sent in the first place. It cannot account for all network dynamics. 
basic statistics summary. Both signal strength and carrier sensing time can only detect constant and deceptive jammer. Neither of these two statistics is effective in detecting the random or reactive jammer. PDR is a powerful statistic to determine jamming versus congestion. It cannot account for all network dynamics. We need consistency checks to be sure. <coughs> Signal strength consistency checks and we have location consistency checks. First of all, we assume that uh, each node detects whether it's jammed and each node maintains a neighbor list of from routing layer, from neighbor list from routing layer. Network deployment is dense, so each node is, has several neighbors. All legitimate nodes participate by sending heartbeat beacons allows for reliable estimate of PDR over time. Ah, okay. Um, Ahona, we want to uh, check. Uh, check. Yani, hella. If, if, if the packet delivery uh, ratio is uh, higher than normal, uh, higher than normal, then it's a, a, yes, صح? Then we check if, if the delivery ratio is high, uh, then it's less than the, thresh, the threshold. So it's not jammed. But if the packet delivery ratio is is very low and it's lower than the threshold, then we should check the signal strength. If the kind of signal strength also low, then it's it's consistent. Yani uh, if the signal strength cannot walk yet, for sure the packet delivery ratio will walk. But it's consistent. So when we have consistency, when we have consistent, we say yes and it's not jammed. But if the packet delivery ratio is very low and less than the threshold, let's say 70%, then we check the signal strength. If the signal strength is really um, high, then they are not consistent. They are not the same. This is low and this is high, then we say it's not consistent and it's jammed. Signal strength consistency checks. Observe normal relationships. High signal strength yields a high PDR. So high high normal. Low signal strength, you low PDR. يعني هنا and the PDR is a can واطي أقل من سبعين خلنا نقول مثلا هنا سبعين إذا كان أقل من سبعين فا ال ال signal strength غالبا حتكون أقل يعني حتكون أقل من مثلا negative seventy three. يعني this is the normal. بس إذا the packet delivery ratio كان عالي فالمنطق إنه حتى س... إنه إنه signal strength also عالي لكن لما يكون عنا ال ال signal strength كتير عالي مثلاً عنا signal strength كتير عالي لكن ال ال pack delivery ratio جاي على الصفر معناه إنه في عنا جامع so a high signal strength but low PDR is a jammed scenario the jammed region has above 99% signal strength confidence intervals and whose PDR is below 65%. So on the threshold they choose it to be 65%. So if it's less than 65 and the signal strength is really high, yani above than above 99% signal strength, then uh -oh. Signal strength confidence interval. 
هذه هذه confidence interval this is statistics this is above 99% signal strength confidence interval هاي بتذكر درستها في ال business statistics too and uh, it's it's uh, it it doesn't really mean that uh, the 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 signal strength uh, is actually higher than ninety nine percent. It's uh, it's ninety nine percent confidence interval. So we have like a confidence interval, which means we are ninety nine percent confident uh, that the uh, yani that this is a jammed region. اوكي هلا عنا ال PDR versus distance so observations انه يعني هون كان ال PDR versus signal strength هلا بدنا نشوف how it is with distance هلا الطبيعي قبل قبل ما نقرا اي شيء الطبيعي انه لما ال pack delivery ratio يكون عالي ال distance حيكون واطي لانه يعني كل ما بعدنا كل ما بعدنا عن ال distance طبيعي انه الباكت ما ما ينبعت ف فهنا بدنا نشوف كيف انه لما يكون عندنا الباكت ديليفري ريشو واطي والديستنس كمان واطي فهنا عندنا مشكله هنا عندنا جامر حتلاقوا هنا في عندنا جامر 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 ف ذاتس ذا ايديا نيبرز ذات ار كلوز شود هاف هاي بي دي ار فاليوز If they have low, they are jammed. All nodes advertise their current location and their PDRs to their neighbors to ensure there is a minimum amount of traffic to establish PDR. Thus, PDR equals zero if no packets received. Similar to the signal strength consistency check, An initial baseline to represent the profile of normal environment P, D, R, and D for each node. And I think the reason in in خطوط إنه إنه هم they tested for this distance, they tested for this distance, they tested for this distance. Okay, that's it.